would like to thank our sponsors, Ocean Stone Architectural Lighting. Fully customizable trap lighting systems for your home, all controlled by an app on your phone. From individual lights to full color spectrum of lights, it's easy to use. You can set timers for special events or seasonal lighting. And what I find really cool are the preset patterns and animation. To get a free quote for your home, go to OceanStoneLighting.com. Welcome to the Quick Tap Rugby Outlier Podcast. I'm Nate Augsburger. I'm CJ. I'm Chef Rock. The podcast that brings you an elite perspective into MLR rugby. Hi, welcome to another episode of the Quick Tap Rugby Outlier Podcast. Hi, I'm CJ. We have the great, no, let me say this first. Practicing social distancing is <laughs> the great Nate Augsburger. One of, if not, the best scrum half in the MLR, Hoorah. the U.S. Eagle, uh, in sevens and fifteens, and a San Diego Legionnaire, Nate Osberger. Yeah, Thank Nate. You, CJ. He in the house. <laughs> then, also practicing social distancing, we have celebrity chef, Chef Rock, the host of Chef Rock television series, launching, on, launching soon on the Roku channel and Amazon Prime, and is a sports nut and a food, food enthusiast also, a new rugby uh, newbie, and uh, we have Chef Rock. How y'all doing, guys? So what's up? What's up? You what's know what's up? funny about this, man? Every week the intros get longer, so next week I'm going to say I'm, I'm CJ, the host <laughs> of NBC Tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> every, every episode, the, the intros get longer. <laughs> longer uh, and longer. So, guys, I've been getting some feedback, okay? Sorry to cut you off, CJ. I began some feedback on people asking me why I didn't finish the, uh, the MLR 2020 All-Star squad without Legion players, obviously. So I figured we give the people what they want. Absolutely, give, man. Give it's the people what they want. And, and let's, let's talk about a couple of these guys really quick, and then uh, we're going to get excited for uh, a oh, special man. guest. Special. So anyways, all right, at the backs, at the backs I got uh, John Poland from New England. He's from uh, Cork. He's an Irish player, and he played for Munster. Quality playmaker. I really like his game, X Factor. Uh, ben Sima, he was, uh, he was injured a game, but ended up whenever he was on the field, like he didn't play against us in the first game of the season, but when he came back for Seattle, they were a different team. So Ben Sima gets a nod at 10. Uh, at 11, I want to pick a younger guy because – Right, I picked Legion players, so I wanted to pick somebody that was younger and on the up and coming. I thought uh, Dion Mike Sell, he's a uh, winger from New England. He was playing really well, and he's got a lot of talent. A uh, big, strong, physical guy, fast as well. Um, at 12, I got Com Foley. This dude's like a Swiss Army knife of rugby. He can just like do everything really well. He's played uh, USA or uh, sorry Australia sevens. And, uh, yeah, I just really like his game. I probably, I probably overlooked Shalom Sunila as well, but he started at so many different positions. I didn't even pick him. Um, at 13, I had Tyler Fisher uh, from Utah, the South African guy, really hard to tackle, really hard to bring down. I like that. I like a bit of contact. Um, and then at uh, 14, I had Dan Moore out of Toronto. He's the captain for them. Well, one of the leaders for them. I don't know if he captains every single game, but awesome player, good guy. And then at 15, I went with uh, Dylan Taiketo Simpson because I feel like I got all that beef everywhere else. I want me a playmaker, a guy who's going to make some plays, right see on. some gaps, and make some magic happen. So, and, and I must say, you know, I do think uh, that could have been swarmed with Legion players. You could have easily put our back line up, our entire back line up in there. We'll talk Just about that in a different episode and talk about how important those players are to the team and add that to it. I got a question for you, and, and I know, make it real quick. Is the scrum half the captain every game, or is it, is it different positions? No, different positions. Different positions. Uh, okay. Sometimes the captain will be in the forwards. It's really, uh, yeah, it's really it's different positions all the time. Now, how do they pick you guys? Is it a, just random, or? Uh, I mean, you know guys on the team, they kind of – they know who the leaders are and guys that they trust. And obviously the coaches have a part in that as well. Um, and some teams maybe do it different, but we've always, we've always kind of like, we knew who the captains were and uh, those are the guys we were going to ride with. Nice. So. Nice. So a question for you, when you were growing up uh, playing local sports, were you always the captain? Were you always the leader? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. I've always been kind of a leader or influencer in one way or another. And I, and mm -hmm. I like to lead. I like to, I like to mm -hmm. lead. And uh, I think over the last couple of years in rugby, as I get to higher levels, I've learned to lead as the captain and learned to lead as the dude who's making the impact uh, however he can on the team. So kind of a wide variety of ways that you can lead, lead in the sport. <coughs> Well, I'm excited, man. Yeah, I think you're born with that, our, right? Our first guest, man. Let's get to this guest. That's right. All right. All right. He's waiting. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do the intro before we bring him in here. Uh, we have legendary New Zealand All Blacks player Ma'a Nanu joining mm -hmm. us today. Uh, over yeah. 100 caps for the All Blacks. Uh, voted not only by New Zealand, but also in other European uh, votes as an all-decade player in the world let alone an all-decade player at center for the All Blacks. So, um, so we have the Michael Jordan of rugby. Uh, he's, he's a goat. He's a goat. He's a goat. He, he's a goat. And um, he's back-to-back -back World Cup champion 2011-2015 with New Zealand. Uh, he's played professionally in France. Otherwise, he's a whole man. <laughs> and look at him. There he is. <laughs> there he is. 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 Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> I was just singing uh, your praises, Mom. I wasn't I was just sure if you were going to be Captain America or something. Yeah, no, nah, Nate lifted in my bag, so I had to bring it back to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. But for yeah. your, your US Eagles uh, Speedos that you lift as well. Yeah, yeah right, right. Who's got Who's the got shield? <laughs> yeah. Yo. Nice, but introducing nice. Ma Nanu. Hey, guys. Love to have you, bro. What's happening, Thanks man? Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Hey. Glad to nice meet, to meet you. you. Glad to talk to you. So, Ma, Ma, how is uh, how is quarantine been out in New Zealand? I know you're home. I know you got your boys home. This is a straight family man right here. How's it been, man? What's going on? Yeah, it's been good. Um, we've been home for just over two weeks from Carlsbad and San Diego. So um, the whole country's on lockdown. Um, so we were on lockdown for four weeks as of uh, a couple of weeks ago. So it's it's been good. Uh, I think everyone's abiding by the rules and. Um, you're allowed to go for a walk, um, but, you know, social distancing is the most important thing. But you can't really travel in your car anywhere. You can't jump in your car to go to the beach or visit your friends. So, um, yeah, it's just been staying home and trying to get the boys active. So, Maz, as uh, six foot one in heels and about like 235 is what you were weighing when you were here? Are you, uh, 235, I think, you yeah. Some... I was about 30, probably 240, I think. Yeah, you you putting Beefing on some up. pounds right now? Or are you working out? Cause I was trying I mean, not to. You're yeah. one of the best to ever do it, unless you're against me on a salt bike. You know what I mean? Then I'm pretty <laughs> sure I think that you know. No, nah, I mean, um, no, nah, it was good. Uh, it was it was hard and sad to say goodbye after only mm. you know just under three months. You know, with the Legion, um, you know, it was making a lot of friends, making a lot of brothers, and. Um, you know, we were, we were on a good streak, I think, as a team. Uh, we yeah, were just, just clicking, but so um, quick. it's just the way life is. It happens so quick. Me and Ma were actually both, uh, both injured just before the season got cut short. And, uh, you know, the one thing I loved about, about Ma is when we started doing extras together, like off-feet condi conditioning and stuff, Ma, you, he's the kind of guy I'd be like, oh, I'll meet you at Ryan Gallup's at Nicoa at 9. And he goes like, this. he'll go, oh, oh yeah, see, they're at 845 then. I'm like, okay, okay. And so he, he'd do that. He'd do that every time we work out. I think there was maybe like, what, once or twice where I was on the bike before he got there because I knew he was trying to beat me to the gym. Always trying to compete, man. Your competitive nature just yeah, I think everywhere. It, it was just trying to create habits around um, a side like the Legion where it hasn't, you know, it's only been formed for three seasons, I think, uh, to my understanding. And it's only, the MLR has only just started. Um, a lot of the boys uh, probably not prone to professionalism. Um, so it's more like, you know, we, we actually got the dream job of uh, playing rugby and the sport we love, you know. And um, it's easy enough to get up every day and train with each other and um, try and string along phases and sequences where we can perform on the weekend. So there were times where, you know, actually when we were going to crunch, you know, we started about quarter to eight, yet we would get there around 10 to seven just to clock in some kilometres or miles 
before the side gets in. So um, there were a couple of times where we got in, um, Ryan, Matthias and Sam Wuching and Nate as well. The four of us were just peddling for a good 45 minutes before the boys come in for recovery. It's yeah. only because we before wanted to get the in. in. Just yeah, get some work done. Nice. And I mean, hey, Ma, so do you feel like, uh, did you coming into the MLR and joining San Diego, did you feel like you knew that that's what this was going to be like um, as an experience? your perception that you know okay we're gonna have to teach these guys to be professional a little bit what was what was your expectation when you decided to come over and play rugby in America and enjoy San Diego Legion I think um because I was unsure how the MLR started or what American rugby was like uh I didn't get the opportunity to play against the U.S. You know, there, there was a big test match in 2014 in Chicago where the All Blacks played. Right. Um, the Eagles, yeah. Prior to 2013, I actually came over in December to New York uh, with a bunch of All Blacks to promote that game. And then the year after, I actually broke my arm, so I couldn't, couldn't play. Um, but I know for sure the game is growing um, and it's getting better and better. Um, the competition itself... Um, you know, the level is still a bit different than what it is to compare to Super Rugby and Māori 10 Cup. Um, but I know for a fact that the attraction is getting bigger and some of the players that have played in different competitions are actually interested in the MLR because of what they've seen online and um, how the game was portrayed in America because um, it's hard to compete with the NFL, basketball, hockey, those kind of American big sport games. Uh, but one itself for rugby in New Zealand, it's just a game that, you know, you, you've grown up with running around in your bare feet. And it's, um, I would say it's our national sport, but there's a lot of sports in New Zealand. And we just love uh, the aspect of giving your best, playing hard, but, you know, playing fair. Well, and, and to add on to that, Ma, um, you know, you're a guy, you're a guy who grew up Kiwi, all black, went to the all blacks and played most of your professional rugby in New Zealand, where obviously a lot of guys will end up, you know, kind of using their, their home country to play in a comp and then eventually, okay, I'm going to go get my money in France or Europe or whatever. And, you know, watching your career, it's it's pretty honorable that you decided to invest most of your energy and most of your time out of, out of your career um, to develop New Zealand New Zealand rugby and leave a legacy with the All Blacks and uh, you know that stuff's awesome I think that's what Americans kind of got to strive for guys like myself or other guys that are maybe in the USA setup um, what do you think if you could if you could break it down for us even a little bit more what's the reality of the differences between us, our, our competition right now, like on the field versus like a super rugby. I, I think it's important to understand like where we're going to go because we are going to go there. Um, but just, just getting your perspective of, of the reality and the differences of, of the levels that we're playing at, you know, compared to other places in the world. Yeah. I think as an organization, you probably have to peel it back because um, New Zealand starts from grassroots. That's where the game's grown. So the kids play it at their local clubs and that's supported by all the families and every single provincial team. And then it starts building from there. So you actually play for where the place you live in. You know, well, I've played for the Wellington Lions who play in the Mighty Ten Cup. And then it's a step up. So it's more of a stepping to stones in terms of the competition. You start at yeah. club rugby, you start at school, then you progress to the Mighty Ten Cup. Then you progress to the Super Rugby. You get a contract, right. you know, semi Just so we're clear, in, in America, we progress from no professional competition, yeah. uh, collegiate and club level, straight into professional now. And, yeah. and before the MLR existed, we were going from club rugby and all that straight into international level rugby. Yeah. So that's, you know? So let me ask you a question. I'm going to chime in here real quick. I apologize for interrupting you guys. It's a great conversation. So, Ma, you have in the difference in over, over New Zealand, you have all the steps to where you get to get to where you are to the New All Blacks. And here in the States, you, it's a little bit different. When you come here to play, what is it? Is it hard for you because the number of fans is not as 
large here as it is in New Zealand? Is it harder for you to get up for a game or it's harder for you to get motivated? Or is it it's just because you're a great player, it doesn't matter where you play. You can play in a stadium in front of two people and you got the same sort of desire and passion. Yeah, no, my desires and passion doesn't change. I knew going into signing with the MLR, you know, what I could have expected. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the Super Rugby I was playing in front of, Minor 10 Cup. I wasn't playing for a national side or even when I was in France playing for the top 14. It was an experience where I wanted to see where, where the game was in America and see where I can help because it was, you know, rumours of, oh, it's, it's great, oh, it's not too bad. But I had to find out for myself. But in, in terms of coming to the to Carlsbad in San Diego for the Legion, I, I actually enjoyed... Um, taking a step back because it's been two extremes for me. I, I played rugby at a lower level and then I went straight and experienced and grateful and blessed that I experienced the top of the game. And to come to America, it was uh, always had a smile on my face because it was like, you know, this is where American rugby's at, but yet yeah, it can get much better. And then you have the players who, have, who are playing rugby in the side, you know, and they're just grateful and they just want to play the game just like Nate, Ryan, all the players that love playing rugby, yet it hasn't been a growing sport in your country, you know? So it was enjoyable and um, pleasing to see. And then you have a few individuals that have come from rugby nations, um, you know, JP Duplessis, Joe Peterson, who, you know, are from South Africa. So it's, as I said, the game's growing and I've seen a few individuals in different sides that are Kiwis as well that, they love it as well, and they enjoy it. So being a pioneer kind of helps you. Kind of, well, it, it feels good to be a pioneer, is what I should say, to help the league. I think it's, yeah, it's just um, trying to help out any way I can. I still want to be competitive because um, that's why we play the game. That's why we love it. We want to win, you know. But people, wow. yeah. yep. No, so, I, I was actually going to, I'm just curious. You know, growing up uh, on the East Coast, it was basically, you know, we played baseball, we played football. There was a lot of different sports that we had the choice of uh, growing up. What, did, what else do they have? I know rugby is obviously the seems like the number one sport there. What other sports did you play while you were there that were just as competitive as rugby? They 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 still have a lot of other sports. You know they have you know they do have basketball, they have hockey, they have netball, touch they're, rugby. They they what netball? Yeah, netball. Oh, netball! I thought you said yeah. nipple. No, nah, sorry. Oh, <laughs> go, wow. I, I've never played nipple before. Well, I, I don't want I don't want to play wow. like, only, only only in college. What college. were you watching before this interview, man? I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was the accent. It was the accent. It threw me, man. Hey, he's, sorry, not, man. Hey, he's our odd he's our odd duck there, uh, Moss. Oh, don't pay him no hey, mind. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Him no mind. <laughs> Just netball curious. looks fun though, if, if I'm being honest. What's I netball? Explain netball. Uh, netball's, um, it's kind of like a round-shaped ball and you play on a court. So um, New Zealand, they had a World Cup last year and New Zealand actually won the World Cup off Australia. So it's mm. quite a competitive game. Indoor netball, um, you can play in the Olympics, isn't it? Men and women, and it's in the Olympics, is, yeah. Is it like yeah. volleyball? Nah, you're actually oh. throwing the ball to each other. Similar to a basketball, but you can't bounce the ball. Okay. And then you shoot it into but a But they don't play that. They play rugby. Net. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they get a little crazy. Yeah, that sounds like a fun, fun game. Yeah, you know? I have to Definitely. look it up. Definitely, oh, I have to Google it. Hey, uh, Ma. So, in regards to uh, you know coming to America, a lot of our sports, are, or at least football, is definitely one that comes off the top of my head. Is we have a lot of like coach, coach driven sports, right? Where like the NFL head coaches are making all the play calls for, for the team, other defensive coordinators, offensive coordinators are making calls for the team. And uh, I, I think it's underrated how much the players actually impact those environments, but it's true. It's a sport where the coaches are going to dictate to an extent how the game goes. And obviously our game rugby is way more player led. And uh, just from your experience, you know, being, being at the heights of the game that you have been and, and in, you know, for those who aren't aware, you guys uh, probably, well, at least there's definitely an article that says you guys compete with, like, the NBA like or the uh, Dream Team, which had, like, 
Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, the All Blacks actually are in the same team conversation wow. with them over a period of time. And Ma was actually a centerpiece during that time as well, um, where they, weren't, they just weren't losing games. Test matches, wow. weren't losing games. Uh, maybe lost six in a six-year span. So could you, could you kind of just highlight or give us, uh, give us your – highlight something in, in those teams, a part of those teams that were so important, and maybe like how players actually have a large say in rugby in those teams, um, along with the coaches, obviously, still. But. Yeah, I think, I think when you're in a team, it's, it's, it's – one, it's an organization. Two, it's a business. But I think, thirdly, the most important thing, it's a family. You know, it's it's sort of like a family when you're at home. You, you know, you run your family and everyone, um, you know, loves each other. Yet you, you, you want to get the best out of your family. Two parents want to get the best out of their kids, and so they push them so hard. Um, I think within the team with the All Blacks, we were had a lot of great leaders, you know, growing up because most of us actually wanted to be All Blacks. That's why we played the game. And the leadership just... You know, we're driven from 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, and when, when you're within a team, you, you try and create a group where, first of all, the team comes first. That's the most paramount, you know, thing about a side is you play on a side, yet the individuals come second because the team comes first. We, we, I think one of my highlights playing in the All Blacks were probably in 2013. We, we never lost a game. And we had a perfect season. And we planned so hard that, you know, we didn't, the outcome took care of itself. It was all about the process. And, you know, we had a leadership group. Uh, and we had different groups inside in the team where they had, you know, their jobs to do. And I think it just clicked on the field. And communication is key because um, you have to be honest in terms of uh, what happens in the side and what happens on and off the field. Right. And right. our performance was the best thing we needed. And that's what drove us is the performance. We didn't talk about winning or losing. It was every time we ran on the field, it was let's go and perform today. No. How honored are you nice. feel, do you feel to be, you know, kind of re compared to the uh, that dream team? Um, that was a great team. Man, that, was, I, that, that was the best basketball player in the world. You know, you know man, the Kiwi dudes be rocking man, basketball dream, jerseys dream, all the time. Dream team, that's <laughs> like way up here. I, I wouldn't even put ourselves in, in, in that category. So, um, yeah. Well, some that, people that, have. So, does it make you feel good? or Because or, obviously you say you don't be, you don't belong, but, you know, obviously someone put you there. Um, I think that's, that's, that's only players or people's opinion. Surface. You know? Right. It's, it's, it's surface, not, man. You know, it's, it's, if someone said to me, if I was walking down the street, no, nah, man, you're handsome. You know, that's his opinion or her opinion. I, I get that all the time. It doesn't yeah. matter because I already know that. Listen, I have to tell people all the time. I have to tell people all the time, hey, hey, hey it's okay. It's all right. Good. It's Why, even, when he's, even when he's wearing a mask in the sunglasses, yeah, feel, you're a handsome I, dude. That, that's one of my looks improved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, it's, I, you know, I, you're going to shopping and someone's looking at you. You, you just have to say, don't say it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know how I feel. You know how Woo. I feel. Now, now, Tough. You understand it's me. Her. You understand me. Man, Soul I feel brothers. flow, CJ. Let's <laughs> go. Uh, good. I'm feeling good now. That's right. Hey, I don't Ma. feel bad telling people to stop looking at me. You know what I'm saying? I know. <laughs> I know. It's, it's tough. You got that attraction. Ma, yeah. I got a question for you. When you're out there playing, I know uh, I read where – and I've, I've seen you do it, where you throw this, like, shoulder block. What is it? Shoulder tackle? Shoulder charge. Is, is shoulder that's charge. going after? It? Yeah. I've that's never done I'm that right. before. Oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> so is that something where you actually work it up, where, you know, you're going to just go take somebody down? It's actually – oh, do they have the ball? Of course. Well, do they have to? Yeah, of course they have. They do have to. They do have to. That's yeah. how you know he's shoulder charged some of them before. He's, yeah. he's asking what the situation is. Yeah, exactly. So you is know. that something you build up and you go, because you, you could hit him another way, right? Or is that well, like the main yeah, way you can take somebody down? It's a there's timing been times thing. Where I've, yeah, there have been times where I've got in trouble for a few times, you know, doing shoulder charges because it's actually illegal. Um, and it's not like American football. You can hit someone without the ball. 
rugby True. it's um straight up and um and there's a referee and you can get cards so yeah. i always say this too about about rugby and football and in rugby, you usually see when the hit's coming. Only a few times will you, will you be, like, catching a ball here and the timing's good enough right. to get cleaned out there. But in football, since there's no rules on how to hit, how to tackle, um, and everybody's just going to kill the one guy with the ball and they're not going to pass it, the, the collisions are way more aggressive mm-hmm. and way more combative. So for, for somebody to be able to do it in rugby, they got to be uh, – you got to be ready. I, I would, yeah. I would, you know, I see rugby a little bit different than you just saw. Yeah, it. me too. That's I'm going, football. I see guys get taken out. If these guys wearing football, they'll get yeah. you a penalty. In rugby, they be killing each other. I mean, yeah. I'm telling you right now, I played football, but I would never play rugby. I, I just, I mean, I'm just, I'm not, I'm going to be, I'm a minute. I ain't mad enough to do that. That, that looked violent. And I've seen it. It's kind of violent. So, you know, it's, uh, for me in football, at least I got a helmet on to protect myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I th- yeah, I think the difference with American football is some of the day you don't know when you're going to get tackled. That's yeah. that's the beauty of their game is you can get taken out and you don't even know it. With right. rugby, you actually know the contact's coming, yeah. or unless you're not looking up. So right. wherever the action is, is where the ball where the ball is. Mm-hmm. So if you're in a rock and someone's trying to flop over and you can actually hit them, you actually know someone's going to hit you. American football, someone's you know like a running back coming bang and you're gone. Oh, that's true. I got to I got to see Ma put a pretty well timed hit on somebody in preseason. Even just to, just the an angry guy out there, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you don't was do that, that you, Ma? Nah, he knows he knows I love it. He knows I love it. He knows he knows, he knows I love it. That, that gives me energy. That gives me energy. When you see that, when you see a oh, guy when I see that, I, I mean, I, oh man, if get your tail you doesn't get up? up from that, you you don't like aggression. What's I your love favorite? that stuff. If you could play in the NFL or an American sport, what would you play? And if you could play in the NFL, what position would you play? Um, I've, I've only just started watching NFL probably the last couple of years. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't know what I'll be because I don't actually know the positions and okay. um, if I'm light enough or – I don't know. I, I see you as a fullback kind of guy, personally. Fullback? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Going right fullback. up the middle, or taking everybody back, out. Yeah. Or, yeah, linebacker. Or, linebacker. or linebacker. Yeah, or linebacker. The thing is, hey, and I made this on, on last last episode, we were talking about NFL players that could that could play rugby. You know, like if, if Ma was playing, let's, let's take Ma's example. If he switched over to football, he could actually weigh like 255, 260. Now you could bulk up. It, yeah, Ooh, he would heavy. put on weight in, in – you know, be a linebacker just coming down channels and just Last big thing. hits, you know, taking on linemen and stuff, you know, but he's a slim 230 when he plays rugby. You know what I mean? It's 230 and, and he's got, he got speed on him and he can pass, you know, people don't talk about Ma's passing enough, you know, yeah. and, and the skill that he possesses. So, you know, it's, it's, um, he's the a skill beast. Set, the skill set's definitely there. If, let, let, let's, let me ask you a question. You got two. You got two boys or three boys. Three boys. So, would you want them to play rugby? Are you teach them to play rugby. Yeah, they're playing rugby now. So they played in Carlsbad when we were there. That's right. So okay. oh, nice. Coastal played, Dragons. Yeah, Coastal Dragons. Yeah. So. Um, Do you want to follow Dad's footsteps? Um. Yeah. If, if if they want to, you know, I, I actually it's it's hard being in a small country because you don't actually don't want to put pressure on your kids. Because most of the time people say, oh, he's played for this team, he's played for that team. Oh, I wonder if his son's going to play his quarters. So it's, you know, if they, if they love the game, then, you know, good on them. But um, How old are your kids? Uh, Mercury, he's 11. Uh, Michael's Mercury, eight. Yeah, and right. McLaren is five. So I got three Are they big boys. kids? Nah. Mercury's nah. probably bigger than me. They're, they're, yeah, <laughs> they're growing, but yeah. Were you a big kid when you grew you growing up? Nah. I wasn't the biggest kid on the team. He's, no? he's lying. He's lying. What? You were you were 20 years old and you were playing for the Hurricanes at on the wing? 20, yeah. Oh, wow. 20 years old. Wow. Okay, then you were big enough. Hey, the one thing, the one thing I have in common with uh, one of the greatest of all time is um, – actually, I, I can't say that for sure. I was going to say we both scored our first try uh, – versus international tries against Canada. Yeah. I did. Hey, go on. 
Go yeah. on, suck it, Canada. Take that. Oh, did you, did you guys pick Canada? <laughs> did I tell you I was born in Canada? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You did. Yeah. Good looking man. Thank you very much. I'm, Canada. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> no, it's all love, Canada. Yeah. Yeah, better, red, no, red, better dead than red. You know what I mean? I'm That's it. You know what? I, you just said something that the, the, the pressure would be on your sons if you played rugby in your hometown. Like, you know, the pressure was on Michael Jordan's sons like crazy. I mean, they, yeah. they blasted Michael Jordan's sons like, you know, all kinds of bad, bad, said bad things about him. And lucky for his kids, they grew up in an era where there wasn't Instagram and Twitter as much as it is today. Right. They yeah. said a lot more stuff about him. So, so is that the only, the only reason why you don't put pressure on the play because of that? Or you just really want them to be kids and let them be who they are? Yeah, I think now I just want them to enjoy being a kid, you know. Uh, man, because time, time flies and, you know, we'll, we, you know, you don't know what the world's going to be like in 10 years, especially what's going on right now. Um, you just got to, for me, it's pushing them in what they want to do and trying to spend more time with them. So, um, but as saying that, as you said, with Instagram, the world has changed considerably with social media. Yeah. And I don't know whether it's a good thing or bad thing. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we just, we just got to look after our kids these days. You don't know what's sure online do. and uh, what are they watching. So, you know. It's definitely hard to find. Wow. You know, definitely. You got all boys, right? Yeah, all boys. Yeah, a, that's a blessing. I have a daughter, and I always worry I, every day. I, it just, it's always in my head. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. It, um, but you know, look, great, by the grace of God, she's still doing well. And no one's ever messed with her. You know? Because yeah, if, sure. if they did, I think I'd lose my mind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, um, but go ahead, Chris. No, I was, I was going to, I was going to transition into this a little bit. And, and ask you what you thought of, and of, of a player like Kobe impact that he had and the legacy that he left behind with his children. Now, the most important thing is, like, if you look at, at you know, all these people talking about the basketball, basketball, basketball stuff, but the thing that I've taken the most away from Kobe's passing is relationship with his daughter and his children. So mm -hmm. you know, that, that, what, do you, what, what's, what do you think about his impact and what he left behind? Such a such a really sad tragedy, I think, you know, um, because in New Zealand, a lot of people love basketball. Right. You know, people say New Zealand is an number one sport, but yet there's a lot of people in New Zealand that love basketball, fans of rugby, I mean, fans of basketball. Kobe was, you know, one of those icons that touched many lives around the world. Um, and he left an example in terms of he was a family man and he had a relationship with his daughters. Um, and you know he'll never be forgotten. So there's times like these where um, players that play international sport is, you know, fame and money come and go. Yet material things these days don't don't matter. Uh, Doesn't matter. The most important yeah, thing is, is is family. You know, we just got to enjoy the time while we got right. here and, and keep those relationships. You know, chats like this. You know, we talk about important things. You know, so right. no, try right. and educate. Yeah. Maha, I got a question for you. Um, speaking along that line, if you could talk to some young kids, I know a lot of the athletes here in the uh, U.S., you know, they have foundations and things that they can talk with the kids. Uh, we're hoping that this podcast will reach some of those young people that have an interest in rugby. What could you tell them, like, when they're, say, 8, eight to 12 years old, what can they do on their own at home, the, the, not just to work out, but to also get that mindset that this is a, a – could be – sport for life for them it's not just a game it's a lifestyle like you know you live your life through the game yeah it's i think people enjoy um actually you know playing with other people and other players you know it's mm -hmm. it's it's hard doing it by yourself and that's why a lot of us play team sport because you know we, we love to thrive and the competition where we're playing with our brothers and, you know, trying to achieve what we want to do. Um, for kids, you know, with, with my kids, I always try and send them outside, you know, to try and play and try and get the best out of, you know, instead of sitting inside, you know, on devices, right. as, as we talked about before. Um, and just set a lot of goals because um, there are a lot of sports out there. Um, but, you know, as, as we talked about family, it starts with the parents. It's just it's parents helping right. them and, it's actually knowing what they're doing, knowing what they're playing and what they're, what they're into. It's, you know, there's maybe a lot of families where parents just push them and go, oh, you know, go and do this, go and do that. And it's, it's what your kids want. And I saw a lot of American kids at the Coastal Dragons that, 
didn't actually know how to play rugby, but they just really enjoyed it. Loved it. it. Hey, they loved it. it. That's great. You know, they love running around, advice. passing, and just actually falling down on the ground. And um, it's just an enjoyment. It's it's hey. when you get into the latter stages, 16, 17, and that's when you start trying to compete to right. play rugby properly. Right now, it's just enjoying being a kid. Nice. No, that's good yeah, and, I, and I'd add, great I'd add the great, the greatest part about rugby in in America and like being an option for kids here. You know, not not every kid has to go to the pinnacle of rugby and go to a World Cup, but they still can travel the world, just like playing for a club in other countries and stuff. I've been to twenty different countries. I'm sure Ma's been to plenty of different countries, and obviously we're playing at a high level. But I have I have teammates of mine that I've played club r- rugby with that have gone and lived in other, other countries and played rugby and they just go over there, they play rugby, they get a job and they, and they enjoy it, you know? So I think the great part, and you know, you sit and listen to a guy like Ma talk, you know, he's obviously built a lot of perspective over his career. And a big part of that has got to be from the play, the things he's seen, the places he's been, just all that experience adds up. And I think that's what rugby does, man. It's just being a global sport. It, it gives you that option, that opportunity, you know. I'm becoming, a, I'm becoming a big rugby fan. I can tell you that just two years ago after we did an interview with Nate and um, we started to really get into I started really getting into rugby. So now, now I'm a fan. So I'm, I'm enjoying the San Diego Legion and I'm trying to I'm, – at first I was super excited about the season. And then the yeah, season was going great. And then the season ended. And then all of a sudden – and just virtual rugby came about, and then they came on there and lost the game for us, and then now we're, <laughs> we're at the bottom of the league. <laughs> so I want to know what you think about the virtual rugby, and I'll, I'll pose another question to you, man. Are you coming back to San Diego so I can get excited for the next season? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's being recorded. I haven't actually seen I haven't actually seen the virtual rugby. I've only just seen the post that uh, the Legion um, put up. And uh, they've, been putting, the they've been putting up the scores, yeah. and all I see is, yeah, it's happened again. We didn't come close, you know. So it's <laughs> been like four today. games where we've lost. We won today. Pete Malcolm to the rescue. Oh, that's great. Was that so, the playoffs? Yeah, yeah. We won our first playoff yeah. game. Good. Well, that's good. Hey, maybe that's what Five they do. 5-0. The playoffs. Video game. You but it's, 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 I think one of the boys that played initially, it's, it's what happens on the field for real. And that's our results. We love playing the game for real. So we can't use the virtual rugby as an excuse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So true. But your next question, I don't know if I can answer that. Okay. Because I, 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 um, we're not putting any pressure on you. But, but I will say to you, it's, it's a pleasure to watch you. And, and it's even you, more a pleasure Thank to continue you. to watch yeah. you. So, you know, definitely, um, you know, again, you got to have, Rugby is a rugby is a is a game that makes me feel a little bit like football, but I get a little bit more excited because there ain't no pads on. Yeah. You know, in football you got pads, you got some protection. And when you go out there in rugby and you see a guy break away, man, he really had to be good and maneuver correctly to get to get away. Because you know what I'm saying? So I'm excited by rugby. I'm looking forward to the new season. So you know, I won't put the pressure. I'll take I'll re, I'll retract that question. You know, it's, it's, wow. We we don't know where we're gonna be in four or five months, you know. Yeah, yeah a, we don't. We don't. Hey Ma, just, Ma, I gotta tell you, I, I got um you know, when I watch you know, because me and Chris went to the games and uh when I start watching you guys play, uh I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm sixty one years old, okay? Not a little kid anymore. Um but I still got oh, that I'm sixty one I told you really? like yesterday. No. Come on. Oh. I look good though, right? A smooth baby. I ain't gonna say nothing, man. All that good uh, eating. Nobody ooh. says I'm good looking, but I mean, I'm I'm healthy. So here's here's the funny thing. I when I watch the game, I wish I was out there. I really do. I think I could play. I not now at my age. But I probably could. I could run away. But I would. <laughs> but I really think that you know by watching it, I think you inspire a lot of the old jocks. You know. Yeah. Because of your physical strength, you remind me of like Earl Campbell, mm. running back for the Houston Oilers. He would run at people. The coach would always yell at him, don't run at him, run around him. But he would plow through. And that's how when I played football, I, I, you know, I was a running back. And that, that was my problem. For whatever reason, I see you <laughs> doing the same thing. My, I see somebody in front of me, I'm running after their ass. I'm like, 
I'm coming for you, and I'm going to well, take you have, out. They didn't have helmets when you played. So, so yeah, it was I, almost actually, like you were playing rugby. Hey, hey Chris, the hel- <laughs> my first helmet I had, had a, it was called a suspension helmet, had yeah. leather straps inside. Right. So when you got hit, it was like someone had a little sledgehammer, and they boom, popped you on the head, because back then you could hit someone, you could spear people legally. And, uh, but I, w- I watch you guys play, and I, and I actually get inspired, like, man, I, 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 maybe there's an old guy league. I would love to play. I missed out on you that. We didn't really it. have rugby. Go to Aspen. Go to Aspen. They got over 50s, over 40s, and probably an over 60s game as well. Get out there and go run yeah. around with those guys. They, they, they have teams they here. Drink a lot, too. Yeah, and they, they, they call it the <laughs> presidents. So that's all oh, the really? – Guys, that you know, so you can still you can come here and play for my club. The guys who aren't broken yet, and they want to go have a jam. <laughs> yeah, I'd be all wrapped up like a mummy. You know, my knee, my my back, my elbow. Now nah, you don't get tickled; it's only touch. Oh, sure, I play touch football. Nah, oh, joking. <laughs> we always got yeah. Every time we played touch, it was always I touched you a little too hard there. No, I mean it turned into a full-on East Coast battle. You know. But I, I love that. I always love the physical contact. So I got to tell you, the coolest game I ever saw, I was traveling through Europe after college, and I was in, in, in Rome. Oh, no, no, in Florence. And it was a medieval football game between North and South Italy. The guys came out with the big puffy pants, and I'm going, what the hell is this? And it was like, I don't know, 20,000, 30,000 people in there. And it was a rugby ball. And they would throw it to each other like rugby, but then you could tackle them, you could hold them on the ground, you could punch them out. It had like 20, <laughs> 20 I, I cots. I, I swear to God, it was, it's, a, it's a real game. <laughs> it's just Gladiator the movie with a rugby ball. <laughs> I, 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 he's like, what the heck was that? But it was like rollerball, too. They would get down the end and they had a little net and they had to throw the ball into the net. It was a medieval football game, but it had uh-huh. heavy, heavy, heavy rugby tendencies because they threw the ball like a rug, rugby ball and um I, I that was the most amazing game i ever <laughs> saw but rugby was damn close i'll tell you right now oh i'm sure you know I'm they didn't sure. have as I many mean, stretchers that what a, that's what a legion that's what you, a legionnaire is right exactly exactly <laughs> fight to the death you right? know take them out I, I know Nate has a couple more questions for you but i'll say this to you ma thank you very much coming on coming on the podcast man you like us brother and uh we'd love to have you back and talk more rugby and talk more just in general life sports man because you know like you just said you know where we're going to be in four months or we're going to be next week you know and um, yeah. so uh the world is a changing and it's going forever change you know what i'm saying so you know we just you know i want to get before we end i just want to make sure i give you this blessing man thank you for coming on man it's thank been you for me, to see you and talk to you so hey. Our I'll let Nate. Was... I'll let Nate wrap up his interview with you, and we'll just sit here and we'll admire you, and we'll. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. admire, before admire the before we do that, are. I got I got one last question. Ma, do you do any cooking at home? Cooking. Here yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I'm sure. I'm a wife, chef. I just like cooking. to see. Do you do the barbecuing too when you're outside? Nah, you're nah, nah. Because oh. I, I wasn't eat. I wasn't eating meat for a while because um my son doesn't eat meat so. Okay. I was, I, was, I was doing the vegetarian thing last year while I was playing Super Rugby, so. Oh, okay. Some okay. different We'll get you cooking. I'll get you cooking. I could do some veg stuff. Yeah. When I come on the show live, man, we would do some Yeah, we'll, we'll whoop it up. Hey, whoop when, it we up get in, when we get in studio again. Um, yeah. There yo, so, so just, uh, just to wrap this thing up, Ma, man, it's, it's been awesome. It's been a pleasure to have you, and thanks for uh, dropping some knowledge down for us and uh i'll just i'll just wrap it up um ma you me and you obviously have a good relationship caught up a couple days ago and got to chew some fat and whatnot but uh man thanks for everything that you you taught us at san diego and and taught me individually as a player man and uh hopefully we'll be seeing you back but uh sure man we love you man and and you're you're a a great family man a great player and we're just so thankful to have you on the show so thanks for coming on and giving us the time really appreciate it thank you brothers thank you very much nate stay safe out there all right thank you ma we'll do man all right ma quick tap see you see you see you quick tap out quick tap out